Remember I told you when you try to push curved needles straight through tissue that it will bend? Well, this is what it bends like. You can see it bends, and I'm sorry for the movement. You can see it bends where the needle holder is. This also happens if you are using a, a needle that is not heavy enough for the tissue that you're going through. The reason I'm doing this video today, I thought I was finished with the suturing wands, but I had someone ask me a question about when you use the KS needle, which is the straight one. So I wanted to um, experiment and see what the options were before I did this video, and I think I have the options. The way I see it, there are three options. I've closed the, the deep dermals here to try, try to mimic what the uh, skin would be like if you had closed it and were doing it on the actual person. So the three options, and this is this first one is the one that I do uh, with the plastic surgeon that I work with a lot. We always just go in at the end. And you can use this finger to push it with. Um, you go in at the end and then uh, leave that part out. Okay, so then you start keep needle in the corners and you start doing your stitches. And then you leave a little bit out like that and you can just pull it. Let me take one bite on this side and you can see. If your deep dermal is close together, this works well. Uh, it will hold it fine. It won't come apart. You just put the steri strip on it and steri strip it across here. So that's one of your options when you're using a Keith needle if you want to um, take care of the knot. And you could do that on both sides. Like I said, one of the plastic surgeons I do does that a lot. The other option you have is doing a simple stitch on one side. You could even do it beyond it a little bit. Do the simple stitch and tie it. These gloves are really slippery. Um, I, and they're also old, so they're not doing too well. So you would tie it tightly. And that's not a good tight tie, but these, like I said, these gloves are slippery. And then then you could go in where the knot is here and start doing your stitch, doing your running subcuticular. So that's another way. And then when you're ready, you could just cut that out, just like the doctor would uh, on some of the ones that he's doing anyway that have simple stitches on the outside. So he'd cut that, and all you'd have left is the uh, inside running subdermal subcuticular. Or here's what I see as the third option. The third option is it would be difficult to put your barrier knot here in the corner because it's tight in the corner. So there's nothing to say that you can't go back from the corner a little bit and start here. And then I'm just going to use an instrument tie just to make it a little faster. Do your instrument tie or do your knot here that's back from the corner. And then we're just going to cut that. And then bury the knot, which you've already buried, partially buried, but now you can go back to your corner and begin your running subcuticular. So now that knot is buried underneath. And now when you start your running subcuticular, I'm going to try and go all the way to the other end. But because um, I, I don't want this video to be too long, I'm going to make the stitches bigger than they should be. So remember, you go two throws before you pull it through. And that's about the right length of them. And then uh, now I'm going to start taking bigger ones so we can get to the other end. Then you just do your running subcuticular. And this needle's a little bit big for, for this. And it's also catching on the ace. But you can go through both sides. And the way I'm doing it, I'm pushing with this finger as you push it through. Of course, you want to be careful that you didn't put a hole in your glove. And what you can do it, like I said on this, this original one, just leave a tag of it out and steri strip it down. If you're not comfortable with that, um, for whatever reason. Here, this is the end. So. I would come in, now I'm going to start doing it the right size again. You come in here, you do this stitch, okay, 
Now we have the stitch about where we want. I would say when you get to be about two centimeters away, don't take, don't pull it tight because you want to be able to get in here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to try and get two more stitches out of this. And I'm sorry that needle's catching on the ace, which it would not do on, on real skin. So I'm not going to pull it tight. I'm going to leave a little bit loose so that I can pull the skin away and see what I want to see. And this is this next stitch is the reason why I don't want to pull it tight. So I want to be able to, and I hope you can see this. I want to be able to go in this end here and go deep. So I start here, take my Keith needle and go deep on this side. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I can pull the skin up, leaving it loose, pull it, evert it a little bit so I can see. I go from shallow to deep in the corner. Can you see that? Deep in the corner. Now I can tighten it. So now I'll pull these stitches tight here and that one tight. And now I'm going to cut it off here because I, in case I want to use it again. Now I'm ready for that sasso knot because this is going to bury both ends. So you're going in, you're pulling it and pulling it through and pulling it through again. And I should not have cut off the needle because now with the needle, then you would go in here with your needle, take the stitch in, go underneath here and bring it out here and then bury it and cut it off. So then you have a buried stitch on both ends with the Keith needle or the KS needle, uh, whatever you want to call it. And then the, the third option is to come out at this end and then you can kind of bring your knot and tie it on itself. So that's what I would suggest, one of those three options with the KS needle.